Welcome back to all of you wonderful viewers tuning in here to the ESL1 Genting B stream. The group stage continues in our best of three, the first one of the day. Well, game one went the way of complexity, and it was, it was pretty nicely done by them. Yeah, they, they executed well. I wouldn't say that it was completely one-sided, but definitely they had a clear uh, plan in mind did what they wanted to do, and uh, Plant Dog didn't really get much traction with their style, yeah. and uh, Game 2, they need to take a win here, or else Complexity are going to simply 2-0 them. Absolutely. Well, they remove out the Tiny and the PL this time. Get rid of both of those nasty heroes, while well, Complexity... Identical bands to Game 1, I, I want to say. E.T., Brewmaster, yes, definitely. those are exactly the bands that they had in the first game. So not changing anything at all. Yeah, why, why break a winning concept, right? So, like we said back then, it's still Elder Titan being some respect ban over to Milan. Uh, I actually played a lot uh, with his, his Elder Titan recently as well in pubs, Radiant just running into him. Um, and Enchantress being removed as well. So, the respect is mutual, you know, different right. heroes. And boom! Game two, First pick straight like out the bat, they're <laughs> like, let's go. They want to take a quick and early uh, control of this game. And um, all picks are available, though, to counter this. And there are plenty of good counters to Lycan. He's still a very powerful hero, though. You need to do it cleanly and uh, find a good way to deal with him. Their approach is going to be the Tidehunter. Obviously, Kraken Shell is amazing. And the Anchor Smash is really good for lowering all the damage of the summon army. Um, so that's one way to do it for sure. But they still can't quite just sack a Tide and think that he's going to be fine against Lycan plus whatever support he has. Because he's a powerful laner. He's going to deny a lot. And uh, that could very well be the hero that's going to be with the Tide Hunter in that quest. Tide and Sand King. Oh man. Yeah. That, looks, that looks really nice. It looks clashy. <laughs> just... Yeah, but but heads, right? You know, two rams on a mountain. Just Honestly, that that's pretty much the approach for shutting down a Lycan in the early game. You do not want to sit back and give him space. You just want to be in his face, make sure that he has to hit you instead of hitting creeps, <laughs> uh, particularly his own creeps. It's punchy, punchy. Yeah, just just fights. Um, we'll see what kind of a lane partner they are going to go with, which doctor comes to mind for complexity if they expect there to be a, a dual lane. Also, a Malodict is quite good against Tidehunter when he thinks he can tank up against the Lycan. Eventually, he just ticks down and starts losing a lot of HP. Um, that is at least one alternative. They could also secure a position 4. Or why not Zed Freak Rubik against yeah. a Ravage Epicenter and Burrow Strike? It seems pretty freaking good, right? That's true. I, I'm sure that Zed Freak just made an executive call and said, yo, yo, just, 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 Rubik. just give me. Come on. Just give me Rubik. It doesn't matter. So, Lycan used to be played mid lane and complexity is one of those teams that i could very easily see just like going all right yeah all pulling right, a fast one pull, yeah. yeah just do a sneaky thing like that but i i haven't seen it in several months or, or even a year it, it can definitely be done still uh much like uh our team in the finals i believe of the qualifier we just played we did the legion commander mid there are a few strength heroes who can still rock it out mid lycan simply because of his high damage i definitely believe you can do it however mid lane's very often not just a 1v1 right like you're not you're not going to be a lycan against a queen or puck mm. alone you're going to be mid and there's going to be four other heroes around you guys um <laughs> on top of the just matchup so in that situation lycan is quite boring he doesn't do that much he doesn't provide that much it's not easy to gank for him it's not easy to save him but like he's not an action um, hero until he has an item exactly he right? he plays better around the safe lane because there he can control the lane deny and pull back whereas mid lane if you deny too much you're just under tower and then it's going to push again much more volatile exactly so the lane balance is not so valuable in the mid lane well, DP Puck taken out by Planet Dog, removing even more of that push as they get themselves an SF. Well, now, you're not going to want a mid Lycan against that, I can tell you, nope. so that's going to be forcing him at least to the safe lane if he doesn't want to start there already. But they uh, like they have the option of SF Clockwork here, but picking Clock alongside Sanking uh, Tidehunter is it like, it no, would be, not, uh, not happening. It would be sort of having triplets, in a sense, <laughs> the Tide Sanking Clockwork. Uh, Three tanky strength melee heroes. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're too similar. There's a there's a point in Dota where heroes become too similar, and it doesn't really work out so well. We actually had it happen earlier this stream, where we had an Abaddon and a Legion Commander, mm. which I, I said in the draft that those are basically the same hero, and very often that doesn't do too well. 
Another example is that Queen of Pain and Puck seldom have a good success rate together. Yeah. Uh, apart from when they're with a drow, then it can oh. work. Uh, you know, it has been done. That kind of deal works out nicely. So yeah. Cole come back with their uh, Tusk, likely for Kyle, rounding out their first couple of picks nicely. And this also it, it plays really nicely into their kind of team dynamic as well, right? Because now Mu has potential fourth or fifth pick, more likely the fourth pick. Able to see, you know, four heroes here from Planet Dog, know his matchups, know a little bit more about what kind of supports he's going to be against. And we know that Mu, very skilled in playing these kind of aggressive offlaners. But with the Witch Dogs are picked up, maybe some of that aggression gets dissipated with both Maledict and Cask being super good. Yeah, we'll, we'll see what he's going to be playing in the end. Uh, definitely still Omni Knight is not a bad pickup for them that's available to them as well. Uh, I think it was really nice that they went with Tusk because that adds also a BKB piercing disable that they can actually... Ooh, nice. Uh, that they can break the Shadow Fiend ulti with. So Tusk ulti is going to be really good for that. But they go for the, the Chessy TA. Now Chessy is very well versed, uh, well versed with that hero, so this is going to be interesting. And it also puts a lot of attention to that hero. TA is not a hero that you pick and then the enemy ignore it. It's a hero that you pick and the enemy need to do something or you're going to have a 15, 16 minute Deso and Blink. Yeah. And at that point, the game is going to be very tough to be a witch, a witch doctor in. Um, or even an SF. Or SF, or actually anyone at that point. But this will potentially free up space for Lycan, and that's a dangerous thing if he gets the Helm of Dominator Necrobook. Uh, so I like the two cores, the way they work in that sense. And you also have the Howl on the first creep wave, where first creep wave is super important for Shadow Fiend, and now you're buffing up the damage for a TA against the SF. Very potentially, we could see SF get denied quite a bit on the first wave, which sets the tone for the lane. Yeah. Sounds like a like an overly complicated thing that I'm saying here, but this can actually completely decide a Shadow Fiends game. You get level advantage um, on TA, you get to drag it back onto your ramp, all sorts of yeah, stuff. Yeah, exactly. So, so I think they have way. to start mid with either Witch Doctor or Sanking has to be there. Or both. <laughs> or both. Yeah, that's a, a solution too. I think Witch Doctor alone should be fine. Which leads me to believe... If they want to mess with Lycan and with TA, they kind of need a self-sustaining safe laner. Something that can do well on its own, that doesn't really need babysitting uh, on Planet Dog. So, something that can 1v1 Moo's hero. Exactly, and that's the downside, is that they, they have yet to see what that hero is, but they will see it, though, soon enough. So, uh, they, they will still get to pick last, right? Since the ban is over on Complexity. Well, I've got a tough decision to make. Radiant team Remove the Sven. Mm -hmm. Complexity, what is your plan then? Yeah, Sven is a typical carry against Lycan. A lot of teams really like it because the um, the Warcry gives so much armor against Lycan. However, a good use of the Necrobook can kind of counteract that by purging away the armor. So it's good and it's not. But at least the Cleave is super good against the Lycan. And then you have that kind of gyro All effect right. where we used to see gyro very good against necro units, but also very bad. Just the fact that if you have the... Razor? Razor or Monkey King? Razor or Monkey King. I have to say, those are like the two by far best options here, I think. I'm sorry, I cut you out, but this is That's like... Fine. Uh, their their last moments here. You have to, you have to get that call in. You have to yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, you know, because soon enough they're going to be forced to pick. But this... Uh, they need a self-sustaining laner. It's going to be against Omni... And Monkey King, of course, with the Django Mastery, does super well against that. And they can't really lane switch it either, because against Lycan, he's not too bad either. Eraser it is. Alright, so a very, very clean matchup there for, for Eraser. And we're going to see if uh, Complexity are going to switch up the way they lane it in any way. Because um, Omni against Razor is almost a complete destruction 1v1. Like, you can basically not do anything at all. Uh, and that would be... That would be almost to the point that winning the other two lanes is not even worth it if you're going to lose one lane that hard. And uh, and no one will need to help the Razor, so they're going to be able to play to the other lanes. This, I like Planet Dog's situation here a little bit more overall. Yeah, I've got their setup working well, if they can get it all done the way they want to. But complexity... I'm, I'm not sure about Limp's. I'm not sure about Limp's cosmetics here on the Templar Assassin. Yeah, uh, he needs um, to step that up. I'll talk to him later. Actually, good, uh, good. I'll, I'll send him a message after this game. Sort, you know. sort it all out. Honestly, win or lose, I'm definitely dealing with this. <laughs> yeah. 
Kyle is pretty swagged out, though, looking at the Tusk, looking very pretty there. Oh, for sure, for sure. But it's complexity. One game to the good in this best of three. Planet Dog looking to potentially even things out here <laughs> with the way they've kind of set Max things up Max Tide is... What the hell is He's got going everything. On? He's got every item imaginable <laughs> equipped. He's got a shark inside of that. <laughs> it's like on top of each other. That's, that's, the, that's the greatest thing is that the, the shark is a hat that's treated as a back item. And then the, uh, what, what do we call it? The, the diver's metal yeah. helmet, whatever the frick it's called. The exactly. old, old timey diving suit. Yeah. There's also the a diver's hat. clock almost, but the helmet. Yeah. yeah. Well, away we go into game number two. As. Oh, didn't didn't do that. Before I forget, press all the little console commands, get ourselves underway. So beautiful. Limp on the Templar Assassin. Okay, now leaves Chessy on the Lycan. Now that we're loading in, I can see he has a nice mantle for a TA set at least. That that cred to you know whoever's set that maybe. <clears throat> That's beautiful. She's got a funny walk. I never. She uh, does have. Uh, uh, it looks funnier with his cosmetics. It's his cosmetics' fault, honestly. <laughs> she normally doesn't walk this way. It's Jesse's fault. She, she she's walking like a four-legged animal walks, <laughs> but she's only got two legs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, you think about how a horse gallops. She's galloping with. Oh, it looks know. less natural when you go into that perspective. Yeah. When well, I look I'm, from I'm, above, it looks fine. I'm, I'm going to stop doing that now. I don't want to zoom in and. And make her feel bad about the way she walks. Let's keep this positive exactly. body image going. There's smoke late here from Planet Dog. 30 seconds until so the that's zero. That's a bounty rune contesting smoke is what they're trying to do. And they're also getting down wards during this smoke. So uh, one ward planted during the ward. Oh, this is going to be tough to walk up, though. They see Lycan. Oh, this man. is almost ideal if he walks up there. But he's going to stay on that high ground now. They could go... North? This is tough. He's walking around to break smokes or just scouting. And he's conceding the rune. Alright. Nothing gained, nothing lost really from it though. Ultimately. They are gonna get three runes though. Still, yeah, still the triple from PD. I mean, Z Freak might be in trouble here. He's being closed in on by both supports. Oh, is he, he has boots, so he should be fine. Oh, he found a hiding oh, he's hole. in a bad spot actually. Cask, Burrow Strike's All too right. far away, even with the boots. Level yeah. 1 Burrow Strike's just so, so far from Milan connecting. is angry at him, though. Give him the Scorpion run. That's such a nice play there from, the, like, Rubik hiding there. While the Witch Doctor kind of tried to look for the Vision Cone across, didn't see him. So he looped around, expecting the movement up. Yeah, he was waiting. Make sure to get himself away, and now middle lane. So, I'm a little bit uh, surprised that Lycan didn't go for the Howl level 1. I feel like it would be would be ideal for his team to go for it, but still, Limp actually being the one playing uh, TA, or uh, the other brother, that I need to talk to them. Um, a little bit surprised that they didn't go for a Howl play, but still doing great on the CS mid so far. Yeah, four and two, cracking start, one and zero on the SF only, and with Rubik here, Milan kind of has his work cut out for him, forces the Burrow strike very early on, but Z-Freak's gonna be just fine with that. He's got his Fade Bolt ready to go in a second, but under the tower, Limp, Playing aggressively. Yeah, thinking has to come in and bail out a little bit to make sure SF doesn't miss Down any last hits here, or too many at least. And meanwhile, top lane, Chessy and Kyle. Again, we're seeing these pairings. Limp and Z-Freak, Chessy, Kyle, they're playing the... <laughs> they just the, swapped the, around. Yeah, the 2-2-1, two, two, and now Mu alone in a lane against the Tidehunter, doing very well so far, but we expect this to potentially change a little bit with Anchor Smash coming through. How, how do you feel about this lane in the 1v1? Uh, it's kind of tricky, actually. I would say that Tidehunter can win it, actually. Um, so I, I know when we used to see like Tide against Axe, there's like Tide has these kind of swings back and forth, right? Mm. Well, what I would say is that if Tide has a good start here and he manages to get to a point where he has level three first, which he does in this game, but only just barely, uh, then he can start denying a lot with Anchor Smash and then last hitting. Regen rune, nice there for the SF. Uh, definitely, that comes in clutch. So he still has his salve and tangles available. And uh, even gets a race with the regen rune on. Getting free, some nice value. Free raise. Don't mind if I do. Yeah. That one costs him, but still securing CS. As this mid lane eyed up by Milan. Double observer wards around this mid lane as well. Looking for rotations, looking for where this Rubik is sitting, but also you know, Kyle's tusk. Definitely an option to bring in and TP to this mid lane to try and kick things off. But we'll see how things pan oh, out. Zedfreak getting stunned, but 
I don't know if he's gonna go down. There is a stinger on him, but... Oh, he didn't realize they was out of mana. I think maybe he could have committed for that kill. I, I would be panicking there about a lift into tower and then... Yeah, exactly. But since he used the Fade Bolt, he didn't have mana for anything else. So uh, maybe he could have gone a uh, nice first blood there. Definitely worth even dying for if you get it. But Oh man, look at that limp. Yeah, got a nice side blade. Double. And that's level 1 side blade. It's a lot easier to land them when you have level 2 on them, actually. So going to get even scarier soon. The yeah. Sanking is ready to stab around to. Oh, my God. Come on. Oh. Here come the three-man gank. Oh, limp. Can they save him? Nice refraction timing. Maledict is in. Limp trying to play aggressively back into Milan. They've got Kyle here with shards and snowball. Milan may be in a spot of bother as they get themselves on top of the Sand King. And the side blade splash back onto the SF as the final move of that fight to really... You know, rub salt in the wounds there. Yeah. Limp is dominating this lane, doubling up. Well, no, no, it's not doubling up. 32 to the 12, if you uh, all, all CS considered. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So that's even more than doubling up. It's almost tripling. Almost tripling up. <laughs> yeah. He must be three times the player. Oh, wow. Um, Kyle getting some uh, stinger on him here from Milan. Uh, he's going to use his shards, getting away safely. People block, have really block. learned to use the shards to maximum efficiency, you know, like the the spell is so useful for many things. Locking the enemy in place, keeping creep waves back. Pushing yourself up onto high ground. Yeah, pushing yourself down from high ground. Yeah. <laughs> you know, a lot of things. And really, you know, Jirax and Kuroki kind of uh, oh, yeah. showing that off in great detail over the past several months on that Tusk. And, and really, the, the two players that made it a reason why this hero has been so very popular recently. Yeah. I, I love how uh, similar very often Crit and Jarex are as players. Normally it's like, oh, oh super yeah. good Earth Spirit player, oh, super good Earth Spirit player. Like, you can you can see so many similarities in them when you uh, watch their play on position 4. The Scandinavian genes. <laughs> must be, must be. Ancients being stacked here by the Rubik, building up for this TA. And you were mentioning that timing, the kind of 15-16 minute deso into Blink Dagger for the Templar Assassin, super important, and ancient stacks and clearing them, uh, a huge part of that, right? The yeah. fact that Limp will leave the lane, give it to someone like the Rubik to leech experience, get a bit of gold while there you are farm big stacks. The big timing for him to go and clear his ancient is going to be when he has power treads. Oh, they're going for a kill here. Beautiful lift by Zipfreak, but of course, the TPing, they have to back off after that. Um, we haven't talked too much about the other lanes in general. Lycan, not having too good of a start here, as he's the one paired up against the Razor, but also not too bad of a start. It's not really horrible, and he's getting something. I feel like that's enough on that lane. Uh, and on bottom lane, Omni Knight is doing really good against the Tidehunter. He's winning by quite a margin. So, uh, and this is in kind of stark comparison to what we were looking at in the draft, where you know you were expecting the Razor against the Omni to have that really great laning matchup, and the Tide tries to deal with a Lycan. That's what they tried to get as well. It was just a lane lane swap, right? So the off lane Lycan is what essentially did it. Yeah. And if you TP swap, then there's just going to be a counter TP swap. So if you get to the lanes and the lanes are not the way you wanted them, and you're on the side lanes and you want to be on the other side lane, then you're basically screwed until a core gets killed. Oh, speaking of a core getting killed. That's Shadow Fiend is not having a great time. Nearly gets the second raise off, which could have led to the downfall of Limp. And he's dropping low here with the Maledict, but only level one, I believe. Gen yeah. 4 unable to really secure enough nuke damage there with the help of his team. Yeah, he's going to be fine. Salving up with the Refraction as well. One of the most lovely things ever, having the Refraction on you when you Clarity and Salve on the mid lane. The enemy simply cannot do anything about it. So good. You can even do it mid-fight if you feel really confident that the enemy can't break the refraction. You can heal up quite a bit. Uh, uh, bottom lane. There's a backstab coming in onto Mag. Mu very likely is going to go down here as well. He doesn't have much counterplay as long as to save a TP cancel, and they do have one. They missed the heal though, but still probably going to gonna get the kill. That's how dead he is. They missed their main <laughs> source of damage. The huge level 4 purification. Yeah, and still he dies easily. And uh, TA now with the traps starting to lay down. That's going to make it much harder to, to close the distance and actually kill her. And, uh, you know, Lycan's closing in on level 6. And Ditcha Raw not getting the biggest damage steals on this lane. He gets 26 here or, you know, 30 there. But Chessy is still fine. Lycan hits really hard. Still even attempting something nice with it. 
We'll see what he gets up to in a second because Snowball in yep. with the shards there. Did Hira goes for the TP? Maybe he's going yeah, to escape. Nice got it. done. If they just had a little bit more experience on uh, Chessie there, he would be able to ulti and of course the 40% chance to crit yeah. would be uh, very, very good for him. Would have been huge. So Limp still with Ancient Stacks to go. Treads have just a oh, he's waiting for the Blightstone. Wants that to come out to him as he's got traps across this mid lane giving so much vision for any kind of backstabs coming in. And J4 giving the lane to leech out. A bit of experience here. And Beautiful needs Milan to save They're him. Killing him. Shards are there, you're right. Look at this limp coming in. One more slap down and J4 takes a fall. As Milan's going to be careful oh, about this damage. They've got the reveal. A sentry is there as he freaks secures with a fade bolt to go down. He just shows up at the right time on that Rubik, just sitting around, you know, friendly neighborhood Rubik. All of a sudden Rubik. Yeah, and bottom lane is turning real difficult right now for Tide. He is at 42 CS, but right now it feels like he's losing control in this lane more and more. The heal is starting to just push him out of the lane. He doesn't have quite the HP regen to deal with this. He's gonna go for a TP out and barely gets out. If you TP a little bit later, <laughs> yeah, that would have been a purify. Purification was coming. It yeah. was coming. It's coming. So, Planet, and, uh, Planet Dog down 5-0. Oh, a 2k net worth lead at 9 minutes is, is not massive by any means. But it just it just feels like, you know, you get that you know, that gut feeling that they're falling behind and unless something drastic happens, you they know, are. A, a big uh, team fight win. It's not incorrect to feel that way because when you draft basically Tidehunter to counter Lycan, Racer to counter Omni, and you get complete mismatch on the lanes, this is not what you want to have happen. And you pick Razor very much because you want to win laning stage. So if laning stage goes poorly, yeah, you're you're actually a little bit in trouble. TA going for the ancient clear now gets rooted a little bit. Unfortunate there, got too close to the prowler. Bloody prowlers. Yeah, and you also don't want to attack the prowlers. They carry a lot of armor on them. So when you farm this, you want to ideally do what he's doing right now, which is to get the small golem and side blade from that. Beautiful stuff. Very Hopefully. important to watch the TA farming. Yes, it is. It is. <laughs> Nothing else is going on. I'm at so all. bad. That's, that's a little bit on Waga, but mostly on me. <laughs> hey, man. This ancient stack is giving way more gold than those kills. Oh, for sure. I mean, what are we looking at? Blink Dagger is going to be here after... Oh, no. He's, he, never mind. He, he, I didn't realize that he'd already cleared the northern camp. But yeah. 400 or so gold away from Blink now. Puts Limp in a very nice position as he swings down towards bottom, looking to set up for a play around this tier one. The catapult wave they don't, cleared away. They don't really have the heroes to stop the defense here as well. The two of them, Witch Doctor and Tide, they can't really push this tower, I think. So I mean, meanwhile, solo defending. Yeah, yeah, he can hold this. And meanwhile, they're just farming up on Chessie. After taking that tower top with the Helm of Dominator now, he's going to be able to just, you know, keep farming a lot. Top tower needs to be defended. Tier two, no one is there. I mean, they were trying. They're TPing in SF. They were trying to dive limp. They brought Sand King in. They swung Razor down, but it's just going to have to be a tier one take rather than a kill and an objective. And look at this, Kyle shoving mid. You were right about top lane. Drops down to what half HP with a yeah. catapult wave there. Yeah, quite a bit of damage right there. And all the while, you know, everything is just being pressured in mid, ancients are being farmed. This is really just complexity doing what I what I talked about earlier. They picked two heroes who require a lot of focus to bring them down, and then Mu on a comfortable hero that he really enjoys playing, and he got a good matchup. He played against Tide, which, you know, like I said, either hero could honestly win, but Mu is very, very uh, exceptional at playing these lanes. Very 1v1 focused. Yeah. Nice repel. Moo's going to save up Kyle, but might have put himself in the firing line instead. But look at him go. Speedy little devil there with a face boot down the drums. And in the meantime, Limp has jumped in, found a kill already. Did you are forcing back Kyle. But with another purification to shards, they'll get not one, but two. As Baranio's get ulti gets nothing. Uh, if they return. stick around, they're going to lose even more. And meanwhile, Lycan is pushing for a tier two tower. Oh, yeah. So oh, yeah. this is getting difficult to defend. You're TPing top, but now mid tier one is compromised and suddenly you're being spread a little bit too thin. Zip Freak, even smoking in here, might find J4. So often, you know, as, as a layman kind of watching TA players... Oh, he did. Oh yeah, super. You, you kind of understand, you know, the ebb and flow of the hero somewhat, but there's always been one thing that I've never been fully able to wrap my head around as Boris Strike Milan looking for Z Freak here. 
With the help of Mag, still unable to really... He has the death ward still, by the way. He never used it in that fight. Cedric just... I feel like I just click him and he has some random ulti always. Okay, not anymore. Now it's Poor not. Ninja took care of that. So, blink over Deso, or blink before Deso, Deso before blink. So... I, I feel like Deso is much better of a comeback item, and Blink is much more, we want to just go and make action happen now. That, that's a fair fair assessment, yeah. In general, I would say, for competitive games, maybe 70 or 80% of the time, you want to just go Blink first. Because uh, that's going to allow you to actually do stuff with your team. Oh, he's trying to do something gonna, with Kyle here, but... Not going to be able to save Kyle. He's, he's a little bit too far gone. Still? Like you mentioned earlier, Lycan is still top exactly. lane. Exactly, it's, it's that constant annoyance on the top lane. And he's closing up on a on a Necrobook, so that's going to be even more pressure once he has it. Mm -hmm. But Rubik no, has Eye of the Storm. <laughs> yeah, no, for sure the, uh, the Blink Dagger allows him to do so much more. And they can't quite catch him. He, he's so hard to kill right now because of it. It has, you know, two purposes for TA. Yeah, and I, I, I guess Blink, as always, is one of those kind of... Farm improvement, uh, quality of life improvement yeah. items, jump from camp to camp, move across the map, collect runes. Honestly, yes, yes. Uh, it's it's going to speed up your farming by quite a bit, because as a TA, when you have level 4 refraction, you farm camps extremely fast, so one of the biggest limiting factors is how fast do you move between the camps. Yeah, I mean, remember that time when there was, there was a period of maybe a month or something, especially in NA Dota, where Medusa was buying Blink Dagger. Oh, and yeah. Just jumping from camp to camp, farming everything. Right, here we go. Planet Dog? No? Okay, well, Mu just walks away. He, uh, he's unkillable, pretty much, I guess. He's very high level, 11 already. A medallion up with drums, phase boots, Guardian Angel already yeah. and raring to go. And they're grouping up around the Lycan. They want to play towards him as a power hero. And meanwhile, just, you know, try and take that tier 1 bottom. Always going for two objectives at the same time. Look at Kyle going for the Courier Snipe <laughs> with that beautiful, lovely sound. Got a bit of lag it kinda, there. Yeah, it wasn't so satisfying. I just no, heard the I didn't hear win. the gadoosh. Exactly. Well, they killed the Witch Doctor. Yeah, we're getting some kind of Dota lobby lag, it looks like. I don't know. Just yeah. us on the spectator side of things. There's Chessie Burr. chasing in onto Barania. They've got Milan with a Barra Strike ready, but oh. the Repel! Chessie able to turn back, but they've got no reveal here to see Milan. So inside the Sandstorm, he will be fine. While down at bottom, they're angling in for Mag. Kyle, he's got the Shards and the Snowball ready. Just needs a bit of help here, but... Oh, Limp is being chased back by Dityra, so they are unable to really focus down on a kill as we finally get the kill message and the sounds coming in. <laughs> Lag has finally gone. There we go. Wonderful. Yeah, we're clear. It's uh, across the world casting. Let's go. <laughs> well, Limp going in straight for Roshan here. They do have heals from Mu, so gonna bring him back up in HP. Need the help from Lycan to really bring this down. And he's coming. And uh, I don't think they can do anything about it. Dire are simply not in position to defend this, so a great call to go Roche. And uh, a lot of that is prep work, right? They force the Razor bottom, they play aggressive and kind of make uh, Planet Dog react to what they're doing, and by doing so, they allow themselves. <laughs> Yule okay. Scepter on Shadow Fiend now. Definitely one of those kind of stopgap items, you know, you're building into something you're, you're building into your itemization later, right? Sure, it can give you a bit of save. Sure, it can set up for a, a Yule's Requiem onto one of these non-BKB heroes. Yeah. Especially a TA through TA, refraction. TA is a pretty good target for it. And uh, he's trying to get the Scyblade onto the Sanking, standing in the sad storm. Gets a few. The sad storm. The sad storm. <laughs> the Milan is definitely it, it in a is, sad storm right now. It is definitely the sad storm. Uh, and that's going to be a 16, 1650 timing, pretty much. 1645 timing on the Deso Blink. Nice. That is definitely not a bad game at all for Limp. With Aegis as well on top of it all. And then you look at Chessie's Lycan, Necro 2 just delivered. You can almost not tell that Lycan was, you know, being played as an offlaner against, mm. especially against a Razor. Like, if you told me right now that this Lycan was laning against a Razor, uh, I would, you know, scratch my head a little bit. Like, like, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not supposed to look that way. So things did not work out the way they're supposed to for Proto or from Proto. Easy. I've done the same thing. Easy mistake. Planet yeah. Dog. Planet Dog. Very, very nice. So grouping up why a five. Why not Planet Cat, dude? PC <laughs> Dota. Come on. Yeah, why not? Planet Hamster. PH. Let's go to the Philippines. Yeah. Easy. Why not? So playing around Ravage now, PD definitely trying to 
hit going. some kind of team fight timing. They've got Sand King ready with a blink epicenter after Burrow Strike, but it's going to be have to, have to be the Ravage from Mag that secures a kill on Mu. But even that is a difficult task to even gain. It. Guardian Angel with Repel and Mu's escaping. He's mid lane. Away. They do get the kill on Z Freak as Kyle will take a fall here to Barania as well as Dityara, but. Bottom lane is in all sorts of trouble. J4 chased back into his base. Centaur and Necroon is now swing back to focus onto the tier two. Yeah, and then top, you know, Limp, he's just on doing what he three. does. And he knows so many spells have been expanded. There's not really that much that can stop me right here. There's nothing right. Yeah, deal tons of damage before backing out. And, uh, you know, that tower already lost almost 600 HP. This is really a beautiful way of playing it that Complexity are doing right now. Uh, even if there was like a Yule's Requiem, the uh, the only thing that can really touch Limp there yeah. still has the Aegis. Well, the thing is that he doesn't have Blink yet on the SF, and even if he has, he picks he picks it up right now. Ah, uh, yeah, you're but right. But even if he uh, tries to Yule's Requiem, you have to do it perfectly, because else, since you don't take damage from the Yules, you can Blink away STA. Mm. Um, if you do it a little bit poorly, uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Spot on. And uh, he's going to steal Ancients here. A triple stack actually going the way of uh, Limp. Juicy. I think they were actually the ones to stack it themselves. Um, like Radiant. I believe they actually stacked the enemy Ancients. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm not entirely sure on that though. Don't see it But they've been, they've been playing on that part of the map for a long time. So it's potent possible. Well, Chessy and Mu. Tier 2 for them. Easy peasy. Clear that one up with no trouble as top lane. Telekinesis oh into boy. Sandstorm, but they've got the TP cancel. More importantly, dead Razor with buyback. But you're looking at a Razor 20 minutes in. Phase Aquila drums one. You're like, okay, stats, small, incremental items, building up to something bigger. What 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 is he what has he got that's bigger? Oh, he's got 3,700 he's gold got that's unspent. A ton of money, yeah. He I'm so surprised he didn't ever find a time to buy a plate mail. You can't buy it now on the courier. I suppose, no, he bought, oh, he changed his mind, going Talisman of Evasion, Halberd it is. Yeah, Halberd, I guess. But meanwhile, like the Rex is just gone, you know, this is what happens when a, when an <laughs> entire team joins together after a long time of split pushing, and oh, by the way, we have some Auras, and <laughs> TA is farmed, and Lycan is farmed. Oh, we have uh, minus armor field buildings, and we have lots of units to hit that uh, minus armor building. I mean, Lycan just makes everything hit so disgustingly hard. It's actually insane to watch. Well, strong stuff from Complexity. Planet Dog uh, struggles on the horizon. The ladder is tall and greased up, and climbing it is not going <laughs> to be an easy task at all. That's a good, good metaphor for sure. They're sliding down the ladder right now, I think. <laughs> this is not going the way they want. 15,000 gold advantage at 20 minutes. Complexity looking so solid. I'm TA just sad there's no another stack. No Venno or Viper in the game, or else you could have a Snakes and Ladders reference there. But oh, yeah. Okay. Not to be. Not, not to be. Not to be. A limp another stack for him. What are we up to now? Closing in on Hurricane Pike. Dragon Lance is already on the courier coming. Radiance is here for Moo. So we've just seen Complexity take down an entire lane of racks. Sure, off the back of a solo pickup. They have to do something right now. This is the goal moment for Planet Dog. They have to make something happen. Yeah. They're going. Repel, though, quickly and onto Chessy means that he's got free reign to run through this fight. Maybe they kill off Moo, but he gets his GA off in time. Oh. Purification Bomb is there, and Milan, oh, he's dead. Screwed over. Ah, PD, they're over. done. Game is over, and GG is called. Milan taps out, and that's it for PD. Complexity will progress wow. forward. In ESL1 Gentic. Man, complexity. They really just, you know, gave themselves a hard slap in the face after their previous performance where they got pretty much curb stomped in the first game. Um, not in this series, of course, in the previous series today. Uh, but they came back, you know, took a 2-0 here really quick against Planet Dog and made it look quite easy. Second game definitely looked like a breeze. So, uh, well done. And... Honestly, just a standout performance from every single player on the team. I think everyone played their part. They didn't die a single time on the Swedish brothers. Uh, the American brothers, they are the supports, and them dying doesn't really matter that much. That's a distraction, as they are just split-pushing a lot. And, of course, Moo didn't die a single time, played a stellar game of Omni Knight as well. When you're three cores, do not die a single time. Yeah. I believe you can call that a pretty hard stomp. Yeah, perfect game from the core heroes there. Complexity, I mean, well drafted, honestly, by Kyle. This series has been spot on from him, yeah. for sure. Definitely a step up from the best of one they lost earlier today. 
but uh, uh, Kyle really impresses me. I, I think he has a really good understanding of how to win the laning stage early on and what to do for your course to succeed. Like he even made uh, Lycan succeed on a lane against a Razor, which is not something that you would expect would be able to do anything. So yeah, big props to to the way they play the draft that they have. That's what I want to say. Well, up next. Another best of three, our final best of three of the day, in fact. Vici Gaming going up against SG Esports. Ooh. That should be an interesting against one. Against Vici. I don't think I've seen those two teams play. I don't, I don't, we, saw, we saw SG Esports earlier, right? But I mean, the two together. But, yeah, I don't think but, I've yeah, seen but yeah, the matchup. Yeah. I can't remember ever seeing them against each other, no. Should definitely be an interesting one. So make sure you stay tuned. Coming up in just a little bit, Vici Gaming against SG. Best of three for ESL and Genting. Got uh, tournament lives on the line. As we'll take a short break and be right back with you.